Understanding art is notoriously difficult. Many of you watch my videos to understand different artworks. Take the creation of Adam by Michelangelo, for example. I made a video to help an audience understand it. But how does one understand an artwork? To do so, does one need to understand the meaning of an artwork? And where does that meaning come from? If the meaning of this painting is dictated by the intentions of the artist who resented the contract, then this is an illustration of the biblical story of the moment God creates Adam as ordered by the church. You can look at the historical context or the context in which this fresco is presented and you might find some meaning there. However, in this video, I want to make the argument that by understanding art in a personal way, by interpreting art, what you're doing is art. I want to talk about the art of understanding art. In the video I made on the creation of Adam, I said that God was the creation of Adam, as in Adam created God. It's not a new idea. The fact that God seems to be inside a brain, that Adam has a belly button, implying that he was born of a mother, the representation of Adam grounded in reality, and God floating, never really touching Adam's finger. These ideas gave viewers a new way of looking at the creation of Adam, a new way of appreciating this artwork and engaging with it. However, many people in the comments disagreed with this interpretation, saying that Michelangelo was a Christian and that even if God was inside the shape of a brain, it doesn't necessarily mean that the artist meant it to represent that God only exists in the brain. And they're absolutely right. The chances of Michelangelo being a Christian are pretty damn high. However, first, we can't know with complete certainty his intentions, even if he reveals them. And second, and most importantly, his intentions don't dictate the truth about the artwork's meaning. This is where I'd normally include a section on Death of the Author by Roland Barthes, but I'll just summarize it. The intention of an author can be important and interesting when understanding an artwork, but they're not the final word on what the artwork means. The viewer or the reader can develop their own understanding of an artwork without the guidance of its creator. I'd recommend Lindsay Ellis's or Tom Nicholas's videos on the concept if you want to know more. All right, while many Christians will give a Christian interpretation of the creation of Adam, and I gave an atheistic interpretation of it. So who's right? To answer that question, we have to look at Taxi Driver. I made a video on Taxi Driver, and I looked at Travis Bickle, the main protagonist, through the Marxist concept of alienation. I decided to look at his character arc, his interactions, and his motivations through purposeless jobs, or alienating jobs. I'm still very proud of this video, which was uploaded two years ago this week, but there were criticisms saying that I wasn't looking at this character the right way, or through the right lens. I was told, for example, that I should have looked at Taxi Driver through the lens of race. That lens of analysis, or interpreting Taxi Driver through the concept of race, would also make a great video. But does one lens hold more truth than the other about the meaning of the artwork? I don't think so. Does looking at the creation of Adam as a Christian work make you more informed about the meaning of the artwork than if you looked at it as an atheistic work? Again, I don't think so. As with life, the meaning of an artwork isn't unearthed, but created. Now, does that mean that any interpretation or lens of analysis will be equally relevant or interesting? Absolutely not. If you make an analysis of Taxi Driver through the lens of anti-colonialism, I'm not sure you'll be able to come up with some pertinent insights. However, if you do, your insights are going to be extremely important in creating a new way to engage with the artwork. A new way to engage with the artwork, not the only way and not the right way. All right, if you agree so far, we've established that you can interpret artworks in different ways despite the intentions of the artist, and that an artwork can have different meanings and different ways to be interpreted, which can be valid 
and interesting. Now I want to convince you that by creating a new way of interpreting an artwork, you are creating a new artwork. This video is basically me trying to convince you and myself that what I do is art, so I can finally be an artist and feel less of an imposter when talking about art. When you analyze an artwork through a specific lens, through a specific set of ideas, what you're doing is creating and providing a new context through which other people can look at an artwork. Does that make you think of something? Well, of course it makes you think of my favorite artwork, Marcel Duchamp's Fountain. I haven't kept count of the amount of times Duchamp's Fountain has been mentioned on this channel, so if you don't know about it, watch the video I made titled How to Steal from an Artist. I have a section there on Fountain and I even made a papier mache rendition of it. It would be hard to overstate the influence that Fountain had on the art world in the 20th century. We were confronted with an upside down urinal, which the artist barely touched. But through the simple act of presenting it at an art exhibition, this artist made us engage with the urinal. They made us think about our relationship to that object and how the context in which we view it changes this relationship. Conceptual art, art where the concept or the idea behind an artwork is more important than its physical qualities, was introduced. Now, what sparked the fountain revolution was the recontextualization of the original object, a urinal. By taking an object and bringing it in an artistic context, you're living a new experience. You're engaging with an object with more scrutiny and appreciation than you would have had art not existed. You're engaging with this object differently because of the work of the artist. And this action of engagement, at least to me, is the foundation of art. Art exists to be engaged with. It exists through engagement, through emotions, through reactions, through understanding. Art is a form of communication which requires the active participation of the viewer. Great artists make you engage with what they depict, the ideas they're spreading or the experiences they're sharing. They can make you engage by showing you great scenes, showing you 36 views of Mount Fuji, for example. But what happens when these great artworks fail to spark engagement? What happens when the great wave off Kanagawa is so massively reproduced that it doesn't spark emotion or any reaction in viewers? What happens when paying tribute to Mount Fuji through 36 woodblock prints just doesn't hit as hard as it did in the 1830s? What you need in this case is artists who will, like Duchamp did with the urinal, recontextualize the original object to give it a new meaning, one that can resonate with new audiences, one that will make this modern audience engage with that artwork in a completely different way than audiences did in the past. By interpreting artworks and sharing your interpretation, what you're doing is creating a whole new concept for that artwork and making an audience experience or engage with this artwork through your own sensibilities. Art interpretation, when knowing that there's no one true meaning, when freed from the artist's intentions, can be an incredible way to express yourself, to engage with the world and with others, to create meaning. By presenting you the 36 views of Mount Fuji through labor and humans' relationship to nature, according to Marx, I made the audience engage with this artwork differently through my own preoccupations and intellectual baggage. I created meaning, one which spoke to me and made me appreciate and engage with the artwork in a more satisfying and illuminating way. To me, this act of creation, this invitation for engagement which you can do through art interpretation is in itself one of the most beautiful forms of art. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd like to know what you think in the comments. It's a pretty important subject to me. It's basically what I do. Even if you don't think it's art, don't worry about it. You can tell me about it. It won't hurt my feelings, not too much at least. Um, by the way, if you got this far, subscribe, like, 
And um, if you're interested in knowing what else I do aside from YouTube, I run an artist residency. You can look up um, legerminat.ca. It'll probably be in the comments, I'm not sure. But I basically started a, an artist residency. Um, I just give free housing uh, for like a couple of weeks for artists so that they can get inspired in, a, in the middle of nowhere in Canada. Um, it's on the side of the water. It's really cozy, but it's very quiet. So if you want to, if you need a place to create, this is the place, this is the time. And we have a lot of fun. We have an Instagram page if you want to check it out. All right. Well, um, now it's time to thank all the patrons. So thank you, Axel, Roman Brandel, X Towns, Jonathan, and all the other patrons for supporting the channel. It's extremely appreciated. Um, if you also want to become a patron, it's 99 cents per month. Hey, this is a, a very um, unscripted um, ending segment. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> All right. So if you, it's only 99 cents per month if you want to become a patron and appear in the credits. Uh, check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas. It's really, really appreciated. Um, any support is, yeah, very appreciated. <laughs> All right. See you next video. Goodbye.